I got up early. It was kind of cold in the house. It was a cold night for this time of year. It was a cold night, but not cold enough to start the wood stove. So it was cold enough to wake me up kind of early, and I thought, I want to go out in the sun and just go for a walk. And I was going to leave my plastic prison behind. But I thought, gee, I'm gonna, the Lord's going to come upon me, and I'm not going to have the means to record it if I don't bring it. So I brought it, and um, let's see if I can get some better light. My eyes are, my eyes are all puffy looking because I was walking in the sun squinting, and also I'm learning that I've got allergies. I spent my whole life thinking I had no allergies, but it turns out that I'm allergic to it. It must be a lot of stuff because my eyes will start running, my nose will start running, and I won't know why. Because it's Mother's Day, I've got some things on my mind. Right here, I'm editing out a piece that I spoke about regarding a couple that I know intimately that live about 2,000 miles away now and have been separated for 40 years. After seeing each other at a family funeral, um, a few months later, the female called the male and said, do you think I can come back home? And the male said no. And that's the piece that segues to what I'm about to say. I've been thinking about it a lot. and What got in between those two? Same thing that got in between me and my wife is sin. My wife and I are separated. It's Mother's Day. And when I first started walking down the road, I, was, I knew I was going to speak on something, and I thought it was going to be on how many events I have ruined for my spouse. You know, days that should have, days that were for her, that I should have put me aside and made her the priority and really thought, really been focused on holding my tongue, not needing to say every word in my mind, not needing to take a stand that minute on some little thing that may have wounded me. Because of the way our marriage has gone and the stupid things we've done to each other, we both have a huge amount of insecurity about the other one. You know, we can love each other, but love is dangerous. And if you're not sure that that person you're loving is going to be kind or is, is not going to wound you it, it makes you very you know very flinchy you're you, you reach out in love but you're ready to pull back and flinch and also to you know strike back in a counterattack when you feel attacked insecurity causes you to feel attacked by things that weren't intended to be attacks and if you're always protecting your insecure inner self you're going to do a lot of counterattacking and the other person's going to do the same. So what do you have? You have two people attacking each other all the time. And how did this happen? How did it get this way? We entertained temptation. Temptation knocks at the door all the time. All the time. Temptation walks by wearing yoga pants. Temptation walks by having a nice jawline, really good hair, and a good sense of style. Temptation walks by all the time. It knocks at the door, and it wants to see if you'll let it in but it never stays at the door. You open that door to temptation, it comes right in and it makes, it makes itself at home. It sets up shop in your heart and it becomes sin. And it invites its friends into your life. Not taking a stand and shutting the door to temptation is going to cause reflections into the lives of your great grandkids. We don't take it seriously. We really don't. <sighs> but I'm here to tell you, look at my face. Do I look serious? Do I look like a serious person? I notice that when I edit my own videos, it looks like I don't even have top teeth because I'm not smiling. Look at my teeth. I was blessed with fantastic teeth. And sin has removed a lot of joy and happiness from me to where my face just hangs heavy because my soul is heavy burdened. I love to laugh, I love to smile, I love to have a good time. Who knows how to really do that when you're, you know, going through divorce. But here it is on Mother's Day and I'm separated from my kids. And it's not like, oh, she ran off and left me. I mean, I'm wrestling div divorcing her. Like, I'm the one who said you can't live in my house. <sighs> and I'm not saying that that was right or wrong. I'm s I've been trying so hard to surrender to the Lord and she has too. And I don't know if his plans are for restoration or for separation or isolation. What is God going to do in our, in our situation? I don't know. I don't even want to know. I want him to do it, 
and say to me, this is what I wanted done. And now go on and here's your purpose. I don't want to know. I don't want to be influencing it. I want what he wants more than what I want. What I want most is what he wants for me. And it's scary. The closer you get to God, the more you know about how the apostles who loved him the most, how they died. Terrible deaths. Yet they were they rejoiced in him. So it's a scary thing. There's a barrier. There's a psychological barrier to really chasing down Jesus the whole nine yards because in your mind you're thinking I might get killed for this but then you know what I'm gonna die anyway I'm gonna get killed for something anyway if you're a single dad out there today on Mother's Day and you're separated from your wife and you're separated from your kids and you're miserable and she's got the kids and it's her day to set aside for herself and lay in bed and get all the love and hugs that you guys used to share together and you're missing that I feel for you. I feel for you that aches and hurts. And I'm not gonna tell you to go run out to her and kiss her ass because she might have done some terrible things to you. She might not deserve to be your spouse. And you might be right to put her away. Ah, my neck hurts. I will say this, that broken heart you got, time doesn't heal all wounds. It just represses them. Jesus heals wounds. My father is wounded by things from when he was four years old. And he's coming up on 70. Time does not heal all wounds. That's something the devil said. Happy wife, happy life. Another thing the devil said. You have to live a certain way to have a covenant marriage outcome. A, mar a marriage that is so full of joy. Where you honor each other tremendously and walk in a union of, of near ecstasy that only happens when two people are submitted to each other and both submitted to God if either one does not submit to God the full potential of joy is not there it's not fulfilled so men if you either want to be reconciled to your wife, maybe she's a really godly woman and you were a heathen like me. If you want to be reconciled to her or if you just want to have your next spouse be a really good woman and have a really good marriage. The only way it's going to happen is if you submit your will to God. If you learn what, who he is, what he did for you and what he wants you to have and start walking in obedience to him. Ladies, if you are apart from your spouse, or maybe you never had a spouse, maybe you've, you've, there's probably a lot of you out here that will have never been married, you had children, some guy got you pregnant and ran off and left you with the kids, left you with the burden and the responsibility. I hope that this is an encouragement to you today. I'm sorry for all the things you endured to be a mom. I really am. I'm sorry for the things that men put you through. We, we, we beat you guys up a lot. You beat us up and we beat you up. And This is the only one who gets joy out of this situation is the devil. God gets no glory from this. And we get no joy from it either the way this, this world is going. But I want you to know that I was going to say I care about you, but the truth is I don't know you. And I'm, if I did, I might not like you. I may not care about you. But it's my duty to serve the one who does care about you, which is, which is Jesus. It's my duty to let you know, to speak the words that would come out of his mouth if he was there. He would say, I love you. He would say, return to me. I've missed you. I've cared about you. I've wanted better for you. It's hurt me to see you suffer. Things could have been different if you'd just come to me. And that's okay that you didn't. I forgive you. I forgive you all the things that you did wrong. I forgive you all the times you turned your back on me. I forgive you all the times you grieved me when you did believe and did wrong anyway. If God was standing there, those are the things he would say to you. But he wouldn't have to speak. He doesn't have to use words. He, I've experienced him. He communicates like a download of data. He can just look at you and you'll know every, every word. There's an instant transfer of knowledge and emotion without sound. 
But if he was there, you would have it. And you, you would perceive that those are the things that he would say to you. I hope that you have a happy Mother's Day. I hope that you have access to your kids. I hope that nobody decides that they have to ruin it for you like I've done plenty of times. Make a fuss. You know, pick an argument. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, I pray that you would watch over these people watching this video and that you would cause a mighty work to happen in their hearts and souls and that you would cause them to believe in you and that my words would bring favor to your glory. I love you, Lord Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.